we often see sex positivity framed as encouraging people to have sex, to be more experimental in their sexual experiences, to feel empowered through sexual expression. Hello lovely humans, welcome to this space on the internet. Before I get into the video, I don't know if it's obvious, but the audio in this video might not be fantastic. I'm thinking that's probably mostly because we have very loud, consistent, droning medical equipment in my household at this point in time. Not much I can do about that, but just so you know. So, if you've been involved in the asexual community for any length of time, you may have noticed the use of the words sex positive and sex favorable. Oftentimes I found that these two words are used interchangeably, and they're used to describe an asexual person who is interested in, inclined towards, or happy or wanting to participate in sexual activity. However, these are actually two very different terms, that being sex positive and sex favorable, and they have two wild different meanings. Using them interchangeably can contribute to stereotypes within the asexual community and ultimately just perpetuate misinformation. These words have very distinct meanings, and to use them interchangeably you're losing a lot of your linguistic accuracy. does sex favorable mean? So here's a quick rundown of the term sex favorable. Sex favorable is a word used to describe an asexual person, asexual specifically, who is inclined towards, enjoys, or likes participating in sexual activity. Usually this is used in contrast to asexuals who are sex repulsed or sex averse. Sex averse asexuals typically dislike or avoid sexual activity. And sex aversion can look a lot of different ways as some sex averse aces are fine hearing about, consuming, discussing sex and sexual activity whereas some may be completely repulsed by the mere idea. And like the term sex-averse, sex-favorable can encompass a variety of different experiences. Some sex-favorable aces may enjoy occasional sexual experiences, maybe only with a committed partner. For some people this might have to be a romantic partner or a partner with whom they have a pre-existing non-sexual bond. Some just may be open to sexual activity if the opportunity were to present itself, and some may really just enjoy sex and sexual experiences and actively seek them out. So now that we've established that sex-favorable is an ace sexual spectrum specific term, let's get into sex positivity. What is sex positivity? Sex positivity is the philosophy or belief that sex and sexuality are a natural part of the human experience, and that people should be able to participate in consensual sexual activity as they wish. Oftentimes this means encouraging safe sex practices, sexual health, and finding sexual pleasure. An oftentimes unsaid part of sex positivity is that just as equally as you should be encouraged to explore your sexuality, that can also mean for some people not having sex and respecting that. Sex positivity in general is about shedding the shame surrounding sex and sexuality and encouraging people to engage with the sexual aspects of their life in healthy ways and ways that an individual chooses to, which can mean having regular sex, infrequent sex, sex with multiple partners, kinky sex, sex with friends, sex with romantic partners, or no sex at all. All, of course, within the boundaries of consent. In hearing this like general description of sex positivity, it's easy to discern that sex positive and sex favorable are two very different things. Let's talk a little bit about the sex positivity movement. The sex positive movement truly became a thing in the 60s, sort of like the hippie era, everybody was rebelling against everything, and the conservative shell, I don't know, around sex and sexuality, how it was sort of taboo and oftentimes looked down upon, especially in conservative or religious contexts, that was just another thing that was being challenged. Here's a quote from Wikipedia to better describe the sex positive movement. The sex positive movement is a social and philosophical movement that seeks to change cultural attitudes and norms around sexuality, promoting the recognition of sexuality in the countless forms of expression as a natural and healthy part of the human experience and emphasizing the importance of personal sovereignty safer sex practices and consensual sex, free from violence or coercion. It covers every aspect of sexual identity, including gender expression, orientation, relationship to the body, such as body positivity, nudity, and choice, relationship style choice, and reproductive rights. It's difficult to like narrow down specific components of the sex positive movement because it is quite a broad concept. 
to be sex positive. Some things that fall distinctly under what is recognized, respected, or to do with sex positivity are as follows. Queer identities, sexuality, LGBTQIA plus relationships, same-sex marriage, relationship anarchy, polyamory, nudity, casual sex, contraception, legalized abortion, women's rights, feminism, reproductive health, and comprehensive sex education. Usually sex positivity is seen as the opposite of sex negativity, wherein sexuality and sexual expression are seen as like dangerous or destructive or wrong inherently, which is often the case in many very conservative religious atmospheres. So let's talk about the perceived conflicts between asexuality and sex positivity. I say perceived because there are no conflicts between sex positivity and asexuality. In fact, they're very inclusive of one another. However, the typical front of sex positivity and the typical front of asexuality seem to collide a little bit in their beliefs, but that's only if you're only fed misconceptions about the two different communities. So while my prior rundown of the definition of sex positivity would allow it to seem like there is no conflict between it and asexuality, there are more nuances born particularly of stereotypes, media, and misinformation. While sex positivity is in distinct support of asexuality and asexual identities and experiences, this is a less popularized version of the movement. Instead, we often see sex positivity framed as encouraging people to have sex, to be more experimental in their sexual experiences, to feel empowered through sexual expression. And this is just sort of a commentary note which you do not have to agree with, but I think I've seen a lot of people sort of discussing the fact that a lot of this popularized idea of sex positivity transfers to venues such as pride. So pride can seem in some ways sexualized, and this can make the environment somewhat less inclusive to asexual, aromantic, and non-binary people sometimes. Mostly asexual and aromantic people, I'd imagine. And that could probably keep asexual and aromantic people from explicitly identifying with the queer community when pride is so seemingly sexualized. And I don't have a clear-cut answer as to why pride is sexualized, or even if it is in every context, but I know it definitely can be in certain situations. And my speculations are on this are that like some older and simplified ideas ideas of what it means to be queer are centered basically just around homosexual sex. That's obviously a very harsh oversimplification considering all of the different identities we're more familiar with now. So an older view of pride could center around basically just sex. I also think this could be because queer kids are often left without comprehensive sex education or just any understanding from people around them of their identities and therefore may be more likely to find themselves in riskier situations sexually, such as in the case of having lots of different partners, which I think is a very common thing among particularly the gay community, is to have a lot of different partners. And finally, I think that the sexualization of pride could be just due to the fact that um, cishets sexualize us as a way to demonize us and make us seem like villains in society that we're trying to uh, turn all of their children gay. I don't know. Instead of acknowledging that queerness doesn't inherently relate to sex, sexuality is a big part of it, but that's not the full picture of what it means to be queer. Regardless of the exact origin of the sexualization of pride and the LGBTQ community as a whole, it often contributes to stereotypical views of asexuality, that they're boring prudes or like somehow lacking because of their identity, and sometimes they're just outright excluded from these queer spaces, despite the ideals of sex positivity actually aligning with asexuality and asexual experiences. So when we use sex positive and we really mean sex favorable, a term specific to asexual people, we can sometimes imply that asexuals who are sex neutral or sex averse are somehow against sex positivity as an entire philosophy or movement, when in truth a person's attitude towards sex in their personal life exists entirely independent of their stance on sex positivity. For example, an ace person can be personally repulsed by the idea of sex, but still be supportive of the idea that everyone experiences sexuality differently and should be free to engage with their sexual identity in the ways they choose and the ways that are healthy, positive, and safe for them. By incorrectly using this term sex positive to refer to sex favorable asexuals, we create a non-existent dichotomy within the asexual community based entirely on the stereotype that asexuals are automatically like anti-sex positivity or that they project a hatred of sex and sexuality onto others if they do not enjoy having it themselves. So I ask that we do our best to be specific in our use of these words um, and our language in general in order to try to dismantle this stereotype of asexuality and also just for increased accuracy so that we can all be on the same page because sex favorable and sex positivity are not 
the same thing. Thank you, lovely humans. Hope you enjoyed your stay here on the internet. We'll see you next time on Spacey Uses. Bye.